assalamu alaikum welcome to lecture 21 of AAA that is prospective financial information this is also another type of specific assignment in my previous lecture lecture 20 I have covered review of interim financial information okay that is also a specific assignment similarly this is also another specific assignments which has a lot of similarities with review okay of course with some differences because this is different compared to review okay so here we are going to focus on what is prospective financial information uh, the short forms is PFI acceptance considerations we had it in review also and level of assurance procedure and reporting all this is covered in review of course with some differences because this is a prospective financial information and how do you approach PFI in your exam so starting with we are going to cover this okay this is an overview of PFI we are going to go through definition when we are going to go through definition four definitions we are going to learn PFI forecast projection hypothetical illustration now compare this with my previous lecture where I finished a review how this one and that one is different different is in review we were comparing with the previous year in perspective we are going to look forward okay in the future number one then the principles of PFI we had principles for review then the procedure okay report content most of the report content will be similar to review only then matters to be considered for example before accepting engagement level of assurance and the procedure so starting with from the exams point of view yes examination on projections and focus regularly comes in triple a exam okay and most of the time it could be in the context of let's say for loan application or as a part of a going concern assessment okay if a transaction because see because for prospective financial information what happens transaction has not yet happened yet okay but the procedures that you are going to do will focus on testing the reasonableness of the assumptions based on which you have prepared the focus to prepare focus management must have used some assumptions your job is to test the whether those assumptions are reasonable or not the procedure is for that okay so prospective financial information is it means financial information that is based on assumptions about future event okay so it could be focused it could be projection it could be both there's a difference between focused and projection focused means okay you are preparing okay it is prepared on the basis of assumption that means it is based on best estimate assumptions okay And projection is it is based on some hypothetical assumption okay now let's see what is hypothetical hypothetical illustration is anticipated outcomes based on uncertain future events and actions okay now types of focused focused is also of different types profit focused and cash flow focused okay two types of focused for profit focused that means you show expected revenue or cost okay and this is prepared on accrual basis that means same way as a statement of profit and loss cash flow focused is uh, okay it's in the next slide I think so for revenue uh, profit focused we have focused at revenue also because you need revenue to calculate profit it could be it could include the amount of sales that you expect to be made in the future okay there will be some focused period let's say if uh, three to five years or one to two years so during that time what how do you expect your sales to be that is focused revenue okay then depreciation also it is focused at based on your set assets you will be calculating a depreciation next type is cash focused for cash focused this based on expected payment and receipts this is on a cash flow basis okay focused receipts 
will take into consideration payment terms given to customer and expected irrecoverable debts also because irrecoverable debt will not result in any cash inflow okay then depreciation remember if it's a cash focused you have to take out depreciation because depreciation is not a cash expense it has an impact on the profit not on the cash okay but if you have paid anything to acquire an asset that's a cash outflow and proceeds from disposal of asset is a cash inflow you have to understand what is impacting cash flow and what is impacting profit the different and principles of using prospective financial information okay so here pfi can be issued as an internal management tool mostly it is used by the management internally because based on this you can get a loan right to show to get a bank loan okay what does the banker tell you they tell you to give a prospective financial statement right prospective financial information may be your cash flow focus but it is prospective it is something to do in the future it's a forecast not yet happened right there you might need this then if you want to distribute to the third party for example in a prospectus okay when you want to issue go public in an annual report you might give or to inform lenders qualities of a good pfi are that reports must address the specific need of user and it has to be prepared on a timely basis now acceptance consideration okay first is you have to see the use of that information it could be for the intern internal manager it could be for the external user the reason is see if it's for the external user okay most of the time external user will rely on it to make investment decision okay so they need it if it's for internal management might need it to plan or might change their strategy right so that's why because third parties are relying on it it makes it riskier for accountant because the consequences of issuing an inappropriate report will be more severe you see if you are giving an inappropriate report is very severe because third party is relying on it next consideration is whether the information will be distributed generally or limited distribution reason if information is for general distribution it's more riskier because larger audience will rely third nature of assumption whether it is best estimate or hypothetical okay see forecast or projection you cannot verify them okay so outcome is very unknown however if information is best estimate then you have to see whether you have made a reasonable approximation or not okay where assumptions are hypothetical it is more difficult because it is more subjective also and there is not much evidence to support it also it is basically purely on management bias okay so it's more riskier so in this case engagement should not be accepted if assumptions are clearly unrealistic or if it is expected that pfi will be inappropriate for its use then don't expect the engagement next is elements that needs to be included in information please okay remember engagement will be will be higher risk okay if the prospective financial information includes those elements of which accountant does not have so much of knowledge okay or that is very complex or extreme extremely complex or highly subjective those kind of information makes it very difficult next you need to see the period covered for that information short term focus is more better it's less risky compared to long term okay you can verify them also now terms of engagement for example what is the nature of procedures that needs to be performed what will be the type of assurance limited this is similar to review negative management response same way management responsibility to prepare pfi and establish appropriate assumptions then restrictions on the use that means who to whom will be this uh, report will be distributed there is a restriction on that 
and basis of setting the fee. Now coming to the level of assurance. Okay. Same. Limited assurance. This is similar to review. Okay. Next. Negative. That means nothing has come to our attention. That to suggest that assumptions used in the focus do not provide a reasonable basis for the focus. These are the wordings of the report. In addition, report will contain an opinion on what on whether the PFI has been properly prepared on the basis of reasonable assumptions or not. Now procedure. Okay, you need the knowledge of the process that is used to prepare PFI same way how we need the knowledge of process used to prepare interim financial information in review here we need it for PFI. For example, you need to know the internal control. Then documentation because if documentation is there you have to see whether those documents support management's assumptions or not third you have to see to which extent entity has used statistical mathematical or automated tools to make assumptions this are often used right no one just makes assumptions out of nowhere you must have used some techniques then what are the methods that you have used to develop and apply assumptions and you have to see accuracy of PFI report. That means in previously also, maybe in the prior period also, you must have prepared prospective financial information. You have to see those focused, how accurate those focused were. Now, next is regarding the nature, timing and extent of procedure. Okay. This depends on likelihood of material misstatement. Okay. If an element has more chance of material misstatement, Extent of procedure will be more for it. Time given for it will be more. Common sense. Knowledge. Knowledge obtained. If you have obtained the knowledge from previous engagement, procedure will be less. Management's competence. You have to see management's competence also. Whether they are competent to prepare, focused. Extent to which information is affected by management's judgment. Yes. You see, this is based on assumptions. So, management judgment plays a key role here. Reliability of those underlying data. Because they are based on assumptions. Next is analytical procedure. Similar to review, we have analytical procedure here also. Okay, to see the focus and the past performance. That means past year also you must have made some focus to see the actual result of the past with the focus of the past year and see how accurate your focus is. Then inquiry. Same is review also. Inquire the management. Because when you inquire the management, you know what assumption management have used when preparing focus. Third, inspection. Okay. Inspect what is the progress of the item that is included in the focus. For example, let's say it's a loan. Okay. You can inspect the existing loan or lease agreement to see to agree the repayment, right? Whether you, the repayments are included in the focus or not. Then you can inspect quotations of price list to agree focused for new assets. Or you could inspect the utility bills to see the reasonableness of focus utility cost. Something needs to be existing, then only you can inspect. You cannot inspect something which is not existing. Okay. Written representation, similar to review. Why PFI is, what is the use of the PFI? Whether management assumptions are complete management's acceptance in preparing pfi okay remember solely okay practitioner cannot just rely on written representations okay practitioner has to plan they have to perform and they have to review a range of procedure okay this is just a part of it where you are not getting evidence through any other procedure, then a written representation is used. Okay, this is solely you cannot rely because in the hierarchy, this is less reliable written representation compared to other audit evidence that auditors or practitioners collect externally. For example, through an indical procedure or inquiry or inspection. 
specific procedure okay this is not specific to this one how we had specific for review we have for pfi there will be differences here okay specific is the area where things might be different if it's general procedure more or less is similar here compare compare the focused amounts to historic performance to make sure that whether it's consistent or not but you also need to take care that past might not repeat what happened in the past might not repeat the trend might not follow maybe this year there is some change maybe you have acquired another company so there's a rapid growth there's a synergy which was not there last year things might like that also you have to consider if there is not a drastic change in the activity currently then uh, the trend will follow more or less it will be similar okay next comparison of focus to the actual results see by the time someone reviews this prospective financial information some of the period might have elapsed that means some period might have gone by right so that time you might have got some actual results also on some elements so you can compare not all the elements you can focus but some yes you can to see how whether there's a very significant variances or not with the focus on the actual okay then we have focused for the previous period compared to the actual results which we have told then reasonably certain income and cost you can verify them for example loan interest loan interest is something which is easy to verify because if you have a loan you will have an interest also right so easily you can verify through inspecting documents for example you can see loan agreements you can see lease agreement you can see the contract then compare the policies that you have used this year compared to last year depreciation one example is depreciation rate it's an example of an accounting estimate then inspect non current asset register to identify the end of useful life and whether they require replacement or not compare working capital amount to to see whether liabilities can be met or not comparison of relationship between the reported figure for example whether there is a significant increase in revenue or not see if there is a significant increase in revenue there should be an increase in production cost or advertising cost or distribution cost also because to support that increase in revenue somewhere cost must have increased right you must have uh, spent more on promotion you must have spent more on advertising maybe more on distribution cost that's why revenue increased so it has to be there next here also like review key ratios like gross profit margin operating profit margin receivable collection payable payment and inventory holding period similar all this are similar now inquiries could be like this okay why when do loan agreements expire okay because this will tell you about the interest and the cash payment right that means profit element and the profit focused and the cash flow focused next are further forms of finance being sought because if you want more finance it will have an impact on your cash flow focused okay whether new customer as new customer or supply contract been agreed since the year end this talk, talks this will tell you about the revenue or the purchase whether the new capital purchase been agreed this will tell you again about the cash payment whether the company invested in the product research development and what are the results as the company conducted any market research and what are the results as there have been new competitors or not now reporting so reporting same like auditors report obviously when it comes to non audit services there will be little variation in the reporting but more or less very much in line with auditors report so i would advise you please 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 go back and read my auditors report first then come to this so it has a title and address e starting with this then identification of the subject matter what is the subject matter here it is focused information next see are you referring it to any loss for example isae 3400 isae you see i have highlighted ae 
AE means assurance engagement. Okay. Because you are assuring that focused information is correct. Then management's responsibility, accountant's responsibility, and purpose and distribution of PFI and the opinion that means negative assurance. Now, an opinion on whether they are properly prepared on the basis of assumptions that means PFI. Appropriate limitations about the actuality of results given the nature of assumptions and inherent limitations in forecasting process. See, forecasting process also has its limitations. Okay, you cannot be 100%, you cannot rely on it. That means the results that you are claiming to achieve, you might not achieve. Limitations are there that you have to take care of. Then, signature and address of the accountant, date of the report. Now, approach to exam question. When you are given a question on prospective financial information, make sure what type of focus they are focusing. Is it cash flow focused or is it a profit focused? Because if it's a cash flow focused, non-cash expense like depreciation will not have an impact, but it will have an impact on the profit focused. Okay. Profit focus, remember it's accrual basis. It checks revenue and cost. Cash flow focus checks on cash payments, cash inflows and outflows prepared on cash basis. Okay, one way a student could approach a question on this is, okay, what would be the starting point for the focus that you have to see. So the starting point for preparing for focus is the prior year actual results. You have to see the prior year actual results it will be given to you in the exam. Use that as a starting point. Then you will do adjustments to that to calculate focus. Okay, from there on take onwards. For example, Let's say prior year profit is given to you. Some profit is given 10,000, 20,000. From there, you either add or deduct. Add or deduct. Okay. So, first one, if any item is not going forward, that means it's not relevant from there onwards. In the future, remove it, deduct it. You might discontinue some activity. Okay. So, any cost or any revenue from that activity should not be included in the focus. Also, you have to take care of the one-off cost. Sometimes you might have sold an asset. You have got some proceed. It's a one-off. You have to include it. Okay. Or there might be a profit on loss on that disposal of asset. That also you have to take it. And redundancy cost. If there's a redundancy cost, that also you should include. If your staff are made redundant. But not if your staff are placed elsewhere in the organization okay you have changed their location or their department or their you have moved them into another location same company then redundancy costs are not included because they are still employed by you next new cost or revenue needs to be added okay for example if you're expanding the business okay you might need more assets and you might need more people so more people means salary will increase cost right more assets also will increase okay so in your profit focus you will see your depreciation will increase payroll cost will increase depreciation because of more assets and in your cash flow focused you will see the payment to acquire assets and increased payment to employees will increase cash outflow next revenues and expenses okay or receipts or payment you need to adjust for example due to inflation there might be inflation so you have to adjust it for inflation the revenue expenses receipt or payment now the assurance providers procedure will focus on whether the figures included in the focus looks reasonable okay for new items this might be achieved by inspecting quotations on market research data. If it's a new item, see the quotation on market research data. Inspect. Next. If items needs to be excluded, you need to review the focus to ensure they are no longer included in that focus. Third. If an item is of a continuing nature, 
that means this year also is there next year also it will be there compared with the previous previous year and very important you need to understand professional skepticism this is a very important quality that you need to take care of why because see the management of the company they will definitely want their focus to be shown in a positive light they are very optimistic about the result so you need to exercise professional skeptical and you need to challenge the assumptions of the management in that case okay now let us go to the uh, report of a pfi how it looks like and a question so here this is a pfi report wording everything remains same only the place where changes are there has been mentioned that is based on an examination okay the evidence supporting assumptions you have to write this nothing has come to our attention and everything is we know what it is it's a limited assurance okay so further in our opinion this is added for pfi that forecast is prepared in accordance with the assumptions and presented in accordance with applicable financial reporting framework okay actual results are likely to be different this also you have to write okay actual results could be different to the forecast because anticipated events they did not occur okay most of the time whatever even that you must have anticipated does it occur no right so variations and the variations could be material so now let us come to a question which is imperial company this is the only question we have for prospective financial information that is p f i okay it's a long question so basically uh, you can take your own time and read it but let me give you an introduction to this case study this is about a company which is going through a reconstruction okay they have uh, various segment okay so basically they are into electrical and telecommunication accessories okay they have household durables and building system so they are planning to uh, discontinue electrical and telecommunication and household durables only keeping building system for which they are preparing a prospective financial information okay for which they are hiring you to review it okay but you are not an you are not an auditor of their company okay paolo is the chief finance officer of that company who is approaching you to report on it okay you are a manager at health falcon okay so uh, re uh, restructuring is going on okay and also they are outsourcing their internal audit as well apart from discontinuing the other two segment they are outsourcing their internal audit also keeping only the building system and they have plans to use new fiber optic technology okay to expand because their main purpose is they want to lower their ongoing cost base okay so now you have been given some other information okay you have been given number 1 the chairman's statement okay it says that uh, there has been a decline in performance okay compared to the past year now there is a decline in performance because of economic climate okay now two you have been given the statement of financial position here you see this is for whole year and this is unaudited okay and this is an interim also because it is only for 6 months to 30 june 2005 okay from 31st december 2004 to 30 june 2005 6 months only which is unaudited okay so see, good thing is when you are given statement of financial position you can just quickly skip and go okay you don't have to read because it's not narratives which saves the time but 
what I always do is whenever you are given statement of financial position, wherever you can see a drastic increase or decrease, make a note of it somewhere. For intangible assets, if you see it increase slightly, non-current assets almost same increase slightly, inventory increase slightly, trade receivable increased, cash, cash reduced a lot. Okay, makes sense because of the condition they are in, right? So non-current liabilities increased, current liabilities decreased slightly. Okay, share capital is same, reserve reduced, accumulated profit also is same. Now you have been given continuing and discontinuing operation. Okay, if you see in 2004, you have revenue from all the three areas that is telecommunication, household and building. Together, you have been given this total revenue. Okay. And you have been given this is for continuing, this is for discontinuing. Together, total revenue. And here only from continuing. Because it's a forecast, basically. And you have been required. A. What are the things that you need to consider before you accept the engagement to report on the company okay so identify and explain for identification you will get half a mark for explanation you will get another half a mark means one mark per point there are total five marks so you can give five points okay five marks five points you can explain that means five matter that needs to be considered before accepting so this is acceptance consideration this question is on acceptance considerations you will see this is very common. No matter what type of engagement you are, this is very common. Even for auditors, they ask, right? B is for 10 marks, okay? Here, you are supposed to give the procedure. The procedures, basically. Okay, till when? For the prospective financial information, for the year till 31st December 2006. Okay? Not so long. Not like four or five years prospective, right? Uh, maybe one and a half year if you take from June 2005. So let's start. This is something very easy. We have just went through the procedure and we went through the acceptance consideration. Now, the challenging thing is you need to link this to the case study. Okay. And if you see the answer given, de definitely this is more than five points and this will be more than 10 points. But you need to limit yourself when you're writing this from the point of exam. See, when you're practicing this at home, writing under time condition, okay? Write it only five points. But when you review the answer, I advise you to go through the additional points also. Because the more you learn, the better it is. The more equipped you are. You know, you are away from all the possible answers that you can answer. It helps you. Don't limit yourself to only five points. But when you're writing it under exam condition, when you're practicing at home, write only five and ten points for A and B. But when you read the answer, you will definitely see there is a lot more. Don't panic. Because they give full suggested all the possible answers. A candidate could think of examiner writes it in a list. They do not think it's for 5 marks or 10 marks and already they will not write limited answer. Take it as a study guide. Learning purpose. Okay. That's why it's more. But my job is to explain all the possible points. So I will go through all the points. Okay. I'm not going to read the points. You can take your own time and read it. It is self-understood. The older thing is you need the structure of answer. Okay. And how to. So when you're writing an answer, first we'll finish with A. Acceptance consideration. We have went through this. Just few minutes back only we went through acceptance consideration in the slide. Right. Some, if you see this answer, there are some things which are not there also, which is added here. Why? Because of the uh, looking at the case study. Specific to the case study, you will get some additional consideration also. We'll see that later. So this was there. We discussed first write a proper heading. Whenever you are writing part A, B, C, different parts, you need to properly label that this is A and matters to be considered before accepting engagement. Properly, you need to write a heading. Even if you're not writing a report, even if this does not come in question one, still you have to write. Okay, you have to type. Next, subheadings. Always keep a subheading. Because for this, you will get half a mark for identification. For explanation, looks like a lot of things are there. Still half a mark only. You can keep this explanation brief also. Uh, according to the time, whatever you have said. Okay, you can write less or more. My thing is only explanation. So first, distribution. To whom this report will be distributed? 
you need to know the party. Why? If you distribute to the wider party, more risky. That's why you need to limit here. First, we'll go through all the points, identification, then we'll come to the explanation. Okay. Second, whether the competence and knowledge of the company and parallel company. We went through this also. Third, period covered by the forecast. We covered this also. Four, the nature of assumptions. We covered this also. Then, access to information, whether you are given access to information or not. Because when you are uh, writing a report, giving your conclusion, it has an impact. Okay. Then, this are some additional things which is there. One is independence. This was not there, but it's here. Then you have to see the risk, level of risk. More than five points. You see, then forms of PFI, then level of assurance. All these things are acceptance consideration. Then permission to communicate with the auditor. See, you are not the auditor of the of your client. You are someone they have hired from outside. Okay. Then consider why auditors. The auditor is Discorpio. Okay, why they have not used them. This was one of the consideration, right? Then authority of Polar to request the work. This is something specific to your case study. It is not there which we went through. We went through the general points until now. Then other matters. This other matters could be uh, which is not there in the previous before. Okay. So you need not write all the points. Only five. Any five is fine. We'll give you full marks. Okay. First, starting with first one, distribution. Okay. See, understand, you want to raise finance, right? Your purpose is to raise finance because you are going to invest in optic technology and all those things. And there, everyone mentioned it also in the case study. I think I've missed that point out. Yeah, because I didn't go through this. That uh, the uh, finance is sought from bank and venture capital. Okay, to do this restructuring. They are depending on banks and venture capital finance. So that's why you need to take care of whom this report will be distributed. Before accepting, this has to be agreed on. Okay. As I told you, greater the number of parties, greater the risk. Okay. It's coming to the second point. Competence. Okay. See, Hal Falcon, they have never audited. Okay. They might not even have the understanding of the building system industry. Okay. So, if they don't have, then it might impact on their review. It will have an impact. Okay. So, if they don't have, if they have only very little knowledge of the building system industry, their ability to assess the assumption about future will be questioned. Okay. Now, and also you have to see the deadline. If there's a tight deadline, it is better auditors do that because they have a full understanding. They have the knowledge. They are competent to uh, review on it. They have the understanding of the entity. Okay, because in tight deadlines, a person cannot come and uh, go have an understanding of the entity. It takes time. Okay. Third period covered by focused. I am going a little bit fast, assuming you will take your own time and read, go through the answer on your own. Okay. My part is explanation. So, period covered. This is very common. If you get any other area where prospective financial information is there, these are the same acceptance consideration you will go through. Maybe explanation might change based on the case study. Okay. But period covered by focus, nature of assumption, access to information, these are same points. So, here, they told you to request and up to uh, sorry review the focus up to this date. Okay, if you see this, this is not this is not extensive. If you want to take a finance from the bank, they might want a longer period, like for four years or five years uh, focus they might need. Okay, they, so provider of significant finance might seek a longer focus. So what you have to do, you have to make sure that in your engagement letter it's confirmed. That you are going to only examine till this date, not beyond this. Why? Because it was requested by Paula, the chief financial officer. Next, nature of assumptions. 
before you accept you have to see what is the nature of assumption is it based on based on best estimate or hypothetical best estimate is fine hypothetical is more risky why because best estimate okay they are likely to have evidence for it because it relates to actions management are expecting to take for example restructuring it's very easy to check for facts whether restructuring is in progress or not how well is it going ahead there are there are uh, there are evidence to check but for hypothetical assumption it's not so they might relate to events which are not necessarily expect to occur so little evidence will be there to check the reasonableness of assumptions for it then access to information if you are denied the access to a previous auditor let's say it might lead to a disclaimer of conclusion okay so make so you have to make sure access has been given to you all the information has been given to you independence independence hell falcon you are not the auditor of the company so that's why independence cannot be assumed you also need to make sure there are no threats to objectivity because if there is threat to objectivity you should not accept that engagement it will that that means the user of the report cannot trust on the reliability risk in this case there are lot of restructuring that took place okay they discontinued some businesses also in 2004 they are planning to stripe away more that means they will only be left with building system so this is more unstable and it increases the risk also that focus will be inappropriate see having the support of two three lines of business is always better than relying on just one okay because if that one fails you have nothing to back up you have no support more risky forms so in that form you have to see whether these elements are there or not for example profit focus cash focus capital budget statement of assumptions budget or statement of financial position statement of business objectives okay when you are reviewing okay which element are you uh, going to examine that you have to make sure okay for example whether you are told to review the profit focus or cash focus because if it's profit focus procedures are different if it's cash flow focus procedures will be different then comes level of assurance limited assurance it is limited assurance okay there are two types two things that you need to take care of for especially for pfi one okay so basically conclusion that you are giving is based on two things one it is either that pf is prepared accordingly like on the basis of assumptions first second that pfi is prepared on a consistent basis with historical financial information that is according to some accounting principle so one is based on assumption one is based on accounting principle both it prepares conclusion on both now permission to communicate with the auditor see if you are the auditor let's say assume if you are the auditor and you are only reviewing this point will not come then this point will not be applicable under that circumstance that's why it only read the case study and applic think and then write write the points you have to make sure whether the point is applicable to the case study also or not just because you learn something just because you went through acceptance consideration don't write all the acceptance consideration some of it might not be relevant to your case study so because he is not an auditor he has to communicate with the auditor okay if he is not granted the access decline decline the engagement then consider why auditor is not used for it okay why see who has a good understanding it is the auditor who has a good understanding no because if they are using a different firm okay it's a risk why because company is thinking that if i hire a different person to review then assumptions that are not reasonable will not you cannot identify easily if some it's if it's someone new it will be harder for them to identify so they can easily conceal if they want to conceal anything but if it's an auditor they cannot do that that's why you have to question why auditors are not used they might want to conceal something next is authority who is hiring whom paulo 
Paulo is give, hiring help help but you have to see whether he has the authority to do so okay for example if he is only responsible for preparing pfi okay and he is the one who is appointing the uh, auditing health falcon then it impairs objectivity health falcon's objectivity will be impaired that's what you have to see other matters like one is fees whether fees you have to see the appropriate level of fee okay then opportunity other opportunity for example can whether can you give them internal audit also see when you hire someone they always think that the, in future okay let's say a review is over in one year let's say in future whether you can give other services also because obviously you want to make sure that your your fee is uh, you know you want to secure your job as well as your fee if you give other services definitely you can get other uh, you can give more get more fees from those other services like internal audit because currently they are outsourcing internal audit so you can see whether you can give the services or not that also other factors then integrity of the one who is preparing the forecast you might give this in your answer you might not think it's fine any five points perfectly all right coming to b b is divided okay one it is divided into general procedure and specific procedure that specific procedure itself is divided into three different parts depending on the case study general procedure will be there for any pfi but specific is based on the case study so when you are writing it's for 10 marks divide few marks for general few for specific those specific we'll see now specific procedure one is for discontinued you, you see there's a discontinued operation for that procedures are there you see how many are around five six are there don't write all five six because the total mark itself is 10 marks only i will show you how you can write but first we'll go through that next is new structure that means restructuring see after restructuring structure changes so new structure for new structure you have different procedure few points for that and third one is changing performance your revenue might change your cost might change your credit might change your debtors might change your inventory period might uh, things might change like that so changing performance also has few points you see if you count all it will be it will add up to more than 20 points but it's not feasible no you cannot write more than 10 points i mean you have to take care of the uh, time also so i'm only going to explain you the general procedure specific procedure you can take your own time read it it is self understood you will be able to understand it okay it is not something where you need my explanation because it is very easy to understand once you read it it's very easy okay mostly you will see it is inquiries of management inquiries of uh, then inquiry of management inquiry of management this is very common the other one is recalculate and sometimes you might have to review the focus cost okay same for this oh for new structure review the focus enquire review the focus enquire okay you might have to compare this this are very com uh, very common even for changing procedure compare enquire of management right so first we'll go through this general procedure there are five see when you're writing the okay i didn't tell you how many marks so when you're writing the 10 points uh let's say three four or three to four for general procedure let's divide the other seven for specific so that specific also divide into three restructuring disclosure and performance change in performance okay or let's say uh, out of 10 you are writing four for general so it adds up to six this is easier no six divided by three so two for here two for here two for here so two points you can write for each and four for general points that is also done okay or you might write one 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 which adds up to three and here it's seven but uh, what i would say is this is a more better okay four four here and two 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 this looks more better rather than you should not write two less for general and more for specific neither you should write more for specific and less for general i mean try to balance both okay don't write too less for one and too much for the other one because you will not get so many points to write for general nor you will get so much to write for specific also 
it should not be that you are writing too much for one point that you are missing out on other for example for discontinued you are writing all eight to seven points whereas for restructuring and for performance you are only writing one point that does not make i mean make sense right try to balance it up wherever you are given more under one requirement you have to write more points that is divided into subtopics try to balance all the points okay so coming to general procedure again okay you will see this three things itself is compare only compare 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 and written representation and recalculate this you will see very frequently in pfi as well as review also in my last lecture review right so compare focused with previous year okay oh, sorry compare focused with the results that has been achieved in 2004 okay to show because that shows how competent managers are in preparing pfi done second compare the focused with previous performance to identify historical trend okay so if there is any deviation from that trend explanation is required that means significant deviation little deviation is fine significant deviation explanation is required done third compare accounting policies used in the focused as well as in the previous year to ensure consistency done written representation from the management that they have the responsibility for focused they believe assumptions are reasonable and they confirm that focus has been used for their intended use done and recalculate the focus to verify arithmetic accuracy okay you will see this very common okay in pfi and as well as review also coming to the specific discontinued operation you can go through it okay for example when you are discontinuing some areas i will tell you one is inventory maybe inventory valuation you might need to check whether it has been written down okay if it cannot be sold the other one would be non current assets you have to see whether from discontinued operation if non current asset is there whether it has been sold scrapped or what has been done with it or used as well in the business that you can ask the management okay for regarding intangible asset you have to see the impairment you have to see the impairment for intangible assets okay then to get the prices for selling non current assets you can uh, inspect the second hand prices or correspondence from buyer okay also you can see whether there is a consistency on gain and loss on the disposal in profit focused and as well as recalculate recalculate the profit and loss on disposal new structure this is on discontinue this will be on restructuring after restructuring what happens see now you are going on finance so you have to see whether interest charges are reflected in that pfi or not you might have to recalculate to confirm accuracy okay you have to make sure whether there is an agreement or not if there is any agreement based on that you can see what rate has been discussed previously whether it is it is there in pfi now or not okay for example you are telling uh, there will be an increase in fiber you have to see whether when you are purchasing it whether whether it is there in the purchase of inventory or not okay also you can ask the management how much they believe that outsourcing is beneficial for them because they outsourced internal audit okay then they can compare the outsourcing fees with any other services given by professional firms they can obtain the details of salary that has been made redundant okay they themselves can calculate redundancy cost and as well as decrease in payroll cost this they can confirm based on the salary and the redundancy terms because when you are discontinuing salary this uh, your employees will be made redundant so your payroll cost should decline right your pfi should reflect that, that there is a decline in payroll cost come into changing performance changing performance what happens revenue now revenue is only from one stream old revenue stream is building system so you have to be more careful next 
compare this focus sales with internal management account or marketing based focus to make sure that it is consistent with the assumptions used to predict future prof profitability third third one previously they have calculated this they have calculated that means you have to calculate it's not given okay they have calculated receivable collection period yes i told i always tell this to my students whenever you are given number okay especially financial statement try to calculate one or two ratio some ratio make use of it in your answer trust me it helps a lot it's it's not that you have to calculate 10 20 ratios no one or two or three one two or three at least three okay is enough but make sure it should be relevant to it for example how do i understand because they must have they could have calculated profit margin operating margin interest cover but why would it receivable collection period the reason is see sales here will be declining correct sales will decline because you are selling off uh, the other two your old revenue stream is building system we, we i can uh, we can prove this from financial statement also you see this revenue is declining okay maybe this is just for 6 months so obviously it will be less but if you see total revenue also it declined okay it declined so when a uh, sale is declining okay sale has a very close connection with receivable anything changing with sales means it will have a change on the receivable collection period also see sale has to do with profit but the counterpart the the sale is having an impact on receivable receivable have an impact on cash flow you see that's why this connection many of you might not think about it but start thinking like this also from now onwards for example if you are given say uh, purchases you might link this to trader i mean uh, trade payable collection period uh, payable if you are given inventory then inventory turnover like that accordingly you have to link ratios if i give if i talk about interest cover it will not make sense here it if i talk about gearing or if i talk about earnings per share eps those ratios it will not make sense and uh, according to this case study you cannot explain that so here they have calculated i will show you how they have calculated will calculate and show 2004 they got 51 days it increased to 74 days in 2005 so that increase is good or bad it's bad because your customer is taking longer time to pay you that means cash is not coming as soon as uh, soon to you as it should be okay that means there is a deterioration in credit control so when there is a deterioration in credit control your cash flow focus should show that that there is a cash outflow it should be consistent that's why you have to obtain details of credit terms that is given to customer and compare this with receivable collection period so now let's calculate how they got 51 and 74 days you have to be very quick and you should know how to calculate ratios i told you always this okay so when first let's calculate for 2004 okay i'm assuming okay and uh, you have to know the formula for receivable collection okay it is trade receivable over sales into number of days in that year so for 2004 because a lot of students i know will make a mistake not in 2004 but in 2005 because when you are taking the number of days here it's okay 365 days you can take here it's not 365 days the the same mistake i also did before i started this lecture when i was going through it it's not 365 days it is only for 6 months we often forget that it's for 6 months so half of 365 days 365 divide, uh, 65 divided by 2 days you have to take okay so here let's see our trade receivable is i will highlight it for you 50.2 and our sales is when you are taking sales take the total revenue this one three even though it has discontinued also yes that also will be included you might be thinking that only continuing no total revenue so 